guys and welcome back to Jazzy61. So in today's video we're going to be talking about what's been going on with me and why I've been so off and so sick and so gone. But before we do that I want to say hello if you are new here welcome my name is Jazz. I do everything motherhood lifestyle a little bit of beauty every now and again when I can pull it off I can try sometimes. Um, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video and welcome back to my returners and new subscribers and thank you guys so much for continuing to support me, to check in on me, to make sure I'm okay you guys. I'm okay. I'm going to get into everything that has been going on over the last what, four, four and a half months or so. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's do that now. For those of you that are new here, I am Jasmine. This is my husband and our little man here. This is my family beautiful family and we also have a little dog but he's over there comfortable in his bed so we're not going to bother him right now so they're here especially him for moral support <laughs> just some stuff i have to say in this video that i don't normally say out loud so uh, let's go ahead and get into what's been going on i'm going to go back to the beginning because if you have not been here you don't know what's been happening um and all of this started back in november yeah. second week of november so about the second week of November, I started getting kind of sick out of nowhere. And I mean, it was like really hard, heavy symptoms almost immediately. I wasn't really sure what was going on. I started to get migraines. I've only had one migraine my entire life. And these were constant migraines that were carrying over through days and weeks at a time. The migraine would get so bad that my vision would change. It would start to shake and to rock. Things will start to spin. I'm gonna have to close my eyes. And I couldn't wear my glasses for a while. If you guys hear Munchkin, that's what's happening. He's running around over here. But I couldn't wear my glasses. I think for like a few days straight, I couldn't put my glasses on at all because it caused such a headache. In addition to that, I would get uh, lightheaded and really faint. Wasn't really sure why that was happening either. Then I would start to shake. I've never shook before in my life. I have never physically started shaking in life, I started to shake, especially if I hadn't eaten, I would shake really bad. And then from there, it seemed to trigger the acid reflux that I normally deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, not day-to-day. -day. I can typically kind of have it under control based upon what I eat and some of the herbs and things that I take. And then that would trigger the nausea and vomiting. And I was throwing up like stomach acid. The reason why I say it was the acid reflux is because it was stomach acid. If you know anything about acid reflux and GERD, you throw up stomach acid. Sometimes your stomach feels like it's burning. You get heartburn, you get chest pains, you get gas, you get bubbles in your chest and your back. It can be very unpleasant. So that's what started to happen. The first day, I think it started like kind of in the afternoon. And I couldn't figure out why I just started feeling bad out of nowhere. I got the headache and I started feeling kind of nauseous. And then uh, my husband was like, have you eaten? And I'm like, ah, I didn't. Because sometimes when I'm moving around, I forget to eat. I get really busy, food's the last thing in my mind. Um, so I was like, no, he was like, eat. And then he made me eat a banana, which I don't like bananas. If you don't know, I do not like bananas. So I ate something, felt fine. The second day, the next day, it happened again. And it happened earlier that day. I had eaten a little bit, but not much. And so again, he was like, eat a banana. I had to go and I ate. I felt better. Now the third day is when it got really kind of tricky because I felt bad the whole day. From that point on, it wasn't like a couple hours out of the day. It was the entire day I felt bad. So I was sitting over here on the couch with my eyes closed because my head hurt so bad. I was gassy for whatever reason. I was nauseated, my vision was blurred and I just felt really bad. So I'm telling him I feel bad. That night, it kind of reached ahead. I went to bed and the nausea feeling woke me up out of my sleep. At this time, he was studying for something. When he's studying, he goes off into his office. He'll stay over there for the night or whatever because he's gonna be up for a while and he'll keep us up. So I had texted him at that time, I don't know if he can see it in his phone until the next morning or what have you, but he didn't see it. It happened again the next night. So night four, it happened one more time. I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? So I would get out of the bed, run into the living room to throw up because the little one was in there. And I hate throwing up stomach acid, you guys, it burns so bad. Like my whole, all of this burns. So the third night, he was actually in the room or the, technically the fifth night, he was in the room with us. And I got up, I have a little trash can by my bed and I ran out of the room. He comes in and he sits down out here with me and he sees what I'm going through. So he's like, we're going to figure it out. We're going to go to the doctors. We're going to do whatever we got to do. We're going to find out what's going on with you. Now, the problem 
with the headaches and the migraines when wearing my glasses, my prescription shouldn't change like that. It, it you go every year. So eyeglass prescriptions don't just change. There's usually something that causes the change. So then you guys are thinking about tumors and things like that that could possibly happen inside my head that's causing this issue. So we start making appointments with like everybody, OBs included, because something that happened in the past could cause that. Um, and I need to go see the OB for that. And then we went to see PCPs and everything. They did neurological tests. They did blood work, you guys. <laughs> they're, they're doing urine tests, you know. And this whole time, I'm taking pregnancy tests myself to make sure that that's not what's going on with me as well. They were all negative. In about a three-week span, I took maybe 10 of them. They were all negative. So we're going back and forth to the doctor's offices. They're taking tests. They're doing blood work. They're doing lab work. They're doing everything. Nothing is wrong with me. That's what they're telling me. Nothing is wrong with me. So at this time, we're thinking I'm really just exhausted, that I'm just tired. <laughs> and he kept saying, go to sleep. So I'm going to bed at like six, seven o'clock in the evening. And for maybe a few days that worked, me going to bed, we tried new pillows. We were trying every type of sleeping pill you can think of. It would work for a day and it would stop. So the z the melatonin, the Advil PM, the Aleve PM, the Tylenol PM, everything worked once and then it, it didn't work anymore. And, and so at that point I wasn't getting any rest at all. So we end up at the PCP's office um, after I did all the tests, they checked my head, they checked my body, they checked everything. And she says, your body is physically shutting you down. You need to rest. I'm like, but I'm not sleepy. She was like, you need to get some rest. Like your body is physically trying to stop you from doing everything that you would normally do. You're exhausted, you need to go to bed. I'm like, I have a hard time falling asleep. So she prescribed me a medication that was for nausea and that would, or would take care of me throwing up, but would also take care of the migraines that I deal with on a consistent basis. So they prescribed me a medication that she said would be really bad if I was pregnant. I'm like, Lady, you just took a test. You took blood work. My OB took a test. She did blood work. I've been taking tests. Everything is negative. So I'm like, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to break the prescription, send it to your pharmacy, go pick it up as soon as you leave here. Cool. Now I'm thinking, we ain't exactly been careful. What's and we? so what you talking about we? Who is we? We ain't been careful. We, as a unit, had not been careful. And I'm like, my cycle's a week away. So I talked to the nurse. I'm like, is it okay if... I just wait until my cycle comes in a week to start taking the medication because she said it could be really bad if I take this medicine and I am pregnant. She's like, well, your tests are negative. And I'm like, I, I know, but I would rather be safe than sorry. So she was like, then just go ahead and wait. Come back home, like I said, we're outside and I'm still not talking to him in the backyard or what have you. And um, I come in the house um, to go to the restroom. I'm like, I'm just gonna take another test. Just take another test. So I pee on the stick, put the stick on the floor. Okay. And then? And then, he's gonna be a big brother. You gonna be a big brother? Yeah. He's gonna be a big brother. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally kicked the little paper off of the stick and there is a plus sign on the stick. <laughs> so I walk back out here, he's sitting on the couch. I'm trying to contain everything that's happening. Cause at this point I'm shaking, but I'm shaking not because Something's wrong with my body, but I'm just like in full panic mode. He's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. So I go back into the bathroom and me, I'm one of the people that have to dip the stick three, five times. I gotta see multiple sticks to believe it's true. So I dipped another one. This one was one that just flashed pregnant or not pregnant. And I'm like, gonna wait for the stick. Gonna wait for the stick. Gonna wait for the stick. And, and I sitting there spinning in circles, tapping my feet, trying to figure out what is happening. And I look down and the stick says pregnant. So now I'm looking at two pregnancy tests. And I'm just like, what is happening in my world today? So I'm standing over here, teary eyed, panicking. And he walks in and I'm like, look, look, look at the counter. Look, look at the counter. And what do you do? He starts dancing. His wife's in a corner having a meltdown and he's dancing. Well, why are you having a meltdown? Look, because I wasn't expecting that result on that test. I've been, we not say I was testing you guys. I'm talking, I was testing. It was like 
two, three tests a week testing. And it seemed like the entire time it was just too soon for the test to show up positive. Mm -hmm. So we're having a baby. Yes. I'm gonna show you guys my tummy if I can move. I'll be a baby. <laughs> Very much so pregnant at this point in my life. Yay. Yes. So we're gonna have to deal with two of that guys. Two of him. Yay. Happy times. <laughs> Happy times. Happy times. All right, so we got Munchkin down for his nap now, but just continue where we stopped at. If you're wondering why I was taking so many pregnancy tests throughout that time period, it's because of him. He kept asking, the question why did you keep asking the question because she gave me the pregnancy cooties it's not pregnancy cooties <laughs> so basically um when i was pregnant with kai before i knew and before we found out what was going on he also got sick and this time it was the same thing he started getting sick so he kept asking me if that's what it was so i kept taking tests and the tests were negative so i'm like i'm not i'm not and he's like you are or his friend was saying his best friend was telling him that I was, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm taking the test. The tests are negative. The doctor took the test. Multiple doctors took the test. It's negative. And he's like, pregnancy cooties. You <laughs> you gave me pregnancy cooties. And I'm like, I didn't know, but that seems to happen every time I get pregnant, he gets sick as well. He I don't shares. like it. He shares, he shares the sickness. I don't like it. But he shares. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now you all know exactly what's happening. Um, but now I'm going to tell you guys why we waited so long to say anything. Because at this point, I am going into month five soon. We didn't say anything for a couple of reasons. And it was a lot of you guessing at it. People kept saying it and kept saying it and kept saying it. This is not even something that we really told our families. Like, no, nobody knew. We, we don't talk about it. Um, and the reason being, like I said, two things. One... I have been incredibly sick over the last four, four and a half plus months. I've been sick just about every single day. If you saw me film anything in that time period, it was during a little spurt of energy. So I would get maybe energy for a couple of hours in the morning or something, and then I would film and then I would stop. And there was a couple of videos where you guys, I'd said I got tired and I didn't finish filming that day. My grocery videos were taking me a week, which they normally take me a day, maybe two, if we gotta go to multiple stores. But it was taking me so long to get stuff done because of that. And so I've been sick, sick. I'm gonna tell you guys about the sick, sick here in a moment because it reached a real bad head about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and it almost put me in the hospital. And the other thing is you all know, <laughs> you all know that we have a son, Kai, and this is something that we don't talk about. This is something that we don't say, but I think it's something that's important because there's a lot of people that go through it and they go through it kind of in silence or they go through it thinking no one understands. But you guys know we have a son, our son Kai that you just saw in the video. Kai was not our first pregnancy. Kai was actually our third pregnancy. And during those two pregnancies, it was it was hard because you're so excited, right? You're excited about a baby. You're excited about growing your family. You're excited about the possibilities of the future. And when you lose the baby, when you lose the child and have to have to keep repeating that you lost the child, it's like taking a bullet. And I mean, it's like taking a literal physical bullet. And the first two times we went around and we told people and we talked about it and we were so excited and it was hard and people would ask, um, how are things going with your pregnancy? Da, 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 da. And you have to tell them there's no more baby or I lost the baby. That was, was traumatizing, I guess you could say. And, you know, little people remember too, because my niece, um, at the time she was much smaller when we lost the first one and we were excited at the time. He wasn't able to be around because he left to go move us into our first place that first time. And my niece was with us when we were going there, my sister and I going to the doctor when I found out. And my sister told her, you know, there's a baby in TT Jazz's belly. And I think it was months after I had lost the baby and she walked up to me and, her, and my, uh, my sister and she asked, mommy, when's the baby gonna come out of TT Jazz's belly? 
y'all. I, this is my my thing, right? Because even when we lost the babies, this is what I did. I smile and I nod until it's over with, until I don't have to sit in the space anymore, until I don't have to talk about it anymore, until I can go off and cry by myself. This is what I do. I don't know if my eyes look, probably look a little weird now. I'm, right. I'm keeping it together over here, I promise. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really hard. And in a situation where you're one for three on kids, you don't want to tell anybody. You know what I mean? You're, you're one for three in pregnancy right now. And I, I we just rather not say anything until we know it's going to be okay. Until we get past some of the bigger hurdles and losing pregnancy losses less likely. You know what I mean? Before we come out and speak. So if you were asking the questions, you were right. But there was a reason why we didn't come forward and say this is what's happening because we we weren't sure everything is kind of a scary situation even with Kai I bled through the first trimester of my pregnancy and I panicked when I started to bleed and they could never tell me why I was bleeding and that same type of stuff started happening this time as well and he's real calm and it's okay it's gonna be fine you know but you don't know that for sure you know what I mean? You, you don't know if everything's going to be okay, if everything's going to go well, if the baby's going to be fine, if you're going to be fine. Because the second one, which I'll tell you guys about all of this stuff at some other point, the second one came with a lot more health concerns than the first. So it's complicated for us to just come out and say, this is what's going on because we don't know what's going to happen within the next couple of weeks. We don't know if I'm going to be fine. We don't know if the baby's going to be fine. And I would hate to have to come back. And I'm, this is something we pray about all the time now, but to have to come back and even now tell you guys that something happened. That, I don't know. I, yeah, it's all right. I don't know. It, it's, it's just been a, a quiet, complicated situation for the last four plus months of just trying to almost silently navigate it because it's been one of those pregnancies that when I say shuts you down, shuts you down. Yep, it has been. He's taken on a lot over the last four months, honest to God. He's taken on everything that I normally do and then everything that he does as well because I literally can't move. Oh, I couldn't move. I'm doing a lot better now. But I couldn't move. When I took steps, I got nauseated and threw up. Like it was bad. Oh, anyway, it's, it's gotten better. So we can we can just look back at it and make fun of each other. Mm -mm. But that, that, that's really... It'd be too soon for another four years. It'd be four yeah, years to go. It's, 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 it's not that bad anymore. So I'm going to so tell okay. you about that. I'm, I'm going to tell you about that right now. So, as you guys know, I've been really, 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 really sick. Once this, apparently, this is the part that blows my mind here. Apparently, I started getting sick within 48 hours of conception. I didn't know what was happening. But within 48 hours of conception, I started to get sick. I'm like, did the thing even take to the egg good in that time frame? My doctor's like, it's possible. I'm like, how? How? How my pregnancy tested negative and I'm sitting over here sick? That was the same week I got pregnant that I started feeling bad. And I don't... Anywho, it hadn't stopped. <laughs> it has not stopped. It has been pretty much every single day since it started. I've had maybe three three, four days where I didn't feel bad all day. Every day. This is why I say it's been bad. I've had some some symptoms similar to hyperemesis. Drive a, I'll put it on the screen, y'all. And I, that's also something I don't think it's talked about a lot. There's, there is a condition that comes with some pregnant women that when I say it takes you out, it takes you out badly. And it can be fatal. That's how bad it is. The symptoms that I had that reached ahead last week, week and a half ago, 
I could not stop throwing up. And here's the problem with it. I couldn't keep down food, I couldn't keep down water. And it was days where I couldn't keep down food and I couldn't keep down water. And my doctor was like, I'm gonna send you a prescription. If this does not start working ASAP, go to the emergency room. You're gonna need IV fluids. You're gonna be way too dehydrated. You have to go to the hospital. So this all started Thursday, <laughs> the week before. And I'm throwing up, I'm throwing up, and I'm throwing up. And he's looking at me. I'm thinking it's like maybe a day of me just feeling bad. I'll be fine. It's just, I'm just, it's normal. I'm just throwing up a little bit more than usual. And he's like, we need to go to the hospital. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm throwing up, I'm throwing up, I'm throwing up. By this time it hits the weekend. Over the weekend, I can't reach my doctor. We have like a message thing and like a portal that you can contact them and talk to them if you need help with something or if you need medication or you need to know if you need to do something. Cool, so I was reaching out to her. I think, what was it, finally by Sunday night, I sent her a message and I'm like, I've been throwing up for days, like consistent days straight. I haven't been able to eat. I can't keep down anything to drink. Like I, I can't, I haven't had anything to eat or drink in days. And she's like, I'm sending you the prescription. If it does not get better soon, like I'm talking today at some point, go to the ER and you're going to need IV fluids. Now this is already bad if your body is regular, but if you're carrying a person, it's worse because the person is the little, the little person in there is feeding off of you as well. And so you get a lot worse off much faster. So my older sister dealt with something similar to this. My my older sister, we come with curves, put it that way. When my older sister was pregnant with my niece, she actually lost about 60 pounds because she was dealing with the same thing. But because she wasn't bone skinny, it didn't take her out, if that makes any sense. Some women that deal with this, it takes them out. Their veins collapsed, some of them died because their bodies can't sustain not having food and water for longer than you know a few few days at a time my body i was at what, what three four days at this point when she finally prescribed something and i started taking it the medication they prescribe to you is medicine that they prescribe to people going through chemotherapy and radiation to help them keep food down so that is what she prescribed me in addition to that medication which is zofran it's a form of zofran in addition to that, the other medication that she prescribed to me was something for acid reflux and GERD because the entire time that I was throwing up, I was also burping. And then once I threw up everything, I was throwing up the stomach acid again. Once that wasn't coming out, I was just dry heaving and it was really bad. So she also rec uh, prescribed something for that as well. So for about a week, a week and a half, two weeks straight, I was taking that to kind of get that situation under control because she was like if if this doesn't stop you have to go to the emergency room you have to have something in your body at this point you're severely dehydrated and it's not safe so think about that morning when i took the first one i felt okay but by the end of the day i started to decline again and i did throw up that day was it that day or the next day i still threw up i think it was that day yeah day off the the thing is the whole time I'm throwing up, he's trying to take me to the ER. Like every time I throw up, he's like, put your put, get your get your shirt and your jacket. We're going to the hospital. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'll be okay. Just wait for the doctor to reply. He's and I mean at two o'clock in the morning, I'm throwing up. We gotta go to the emergency room. And I mean anything I put in my mouth, it came right back out. Anything, of anything. It was even if I had the essence of a lemon on my tongue, I threw up. It was that bad. And so I was in a really bad state where I could not move pretty much. I had to pretty much just lay still. Anytime I took a step, anytime I sat up, when I rolled over, like pretty much anything that I would do that would require my body to do anything, I threw up. So this is why I say he took over a lot of stuff for me over the course of the last four and a half months. I was still trying to balance everything. And when I had burst of energy, I would get up and try to clean. I would get up and try to make something to eat. I would try to do something, but it never, it never lasted longer than a couple of hours um, before my body kind of tanked. And that was only like a handful of times that I could think of. Because I went to do the groceries and stuff like that and literally just going to the store, getting them and bringing them home. And the process of trying to take everything out of the bags took me down through there. And I would have to sit down in between those moments just so that I could catch my breath my body wouldn't overheat. I wouldn't be too tired. He won't let me do nothing. 
Is there something for you to do? Clean. He won't let me do nothing. Is there something for you to do? Nothing. All right, then. You hear me? He won't let me do nothing. I can't cook. I, I just can't. Great. I can't. Hey, you got another job, so do that one. I can't. Okay. All I want to do is do something. Yeah, sitting down is doing something. I can't. <laughs> it's not doing nothing to me. <laughs> I'm used to moving. So over this last week, it's been better. I still feel off because um, I don't have an appetite. Like at all. I'm like not hungry. Yeah, sorry. We're working on it. Which kind of goes back to the beginning of me not eating much anyways. And I think that's probably what it is. I'm just not used to eating so much throughout the day. I, I nibble, I drink protein shakes, I usually have a lot of water, but I don't just sit down and eat. Mm, all right, we'll fix it. He's saying it. He's so optimistic, y'all. You know what the worst part of all this is? He hasn't, he he met my doctor over FaceTime. He's not once met my, my OB, because because of COVID and where we live, it kicked up so much that no one can come into my appointments with me. So he hasn't met her. The first time he'll be meeting her is in my next appointment. Which is unusual because before this, he went to every appointment. It's all right. We're still cool, though. <laughs> he's missed so many and it's not used. Uh, he comes to all my appointments with me. I think since that first incident where I lost the first one, he wasn't able to be there. And so after that, he's gone to every single. He doesn't miss an appointment. He misses nothing. Even now, he drives and he just sits in the car. He can't come in, but he sits in the car, and I call him on FaceTime. First of all, stop putting my business out I'm there. I'm putting all your business out here. All, all the kids in the street, okay? But it's just been weird going to appointments without him in there. Oh, here's the baby's heartbeat. Hey, babe, can you hear the heartbeat? Put the phone down. <laughs> Technology. Can you hear that? <laughs> so it's been awkward. Um, in this last appointment, over that week where I couldn't eat, I lost six pounds. So this is what I mean by how bad it can get. Because if I lost six pounds, I got over 20 weeks left. But if I just lost six pounds for 20 weeks straight, that's 100 and what, 20 pounds? And that's I- That's terrible. That's terrible. I'm, I'm, I'm over two right now. But if I lost, if I kept losing, if they couldn't get it under control, which a lot of, some women can't get it under control. If they can't get this under control, it would be a, a very severe problem. So when I went in, she said, you did lose weight. And I was like, I kind of figured as much I couldn't eat. So that makes sense to me that I lost, you know, six pounds in pretty much a week. Everything else in my blood was, she said everything was okay, but she could tell that I was still really dehydrated, which that was, I it reached ahead on Sunday and my appointment was that Friday. And on that Friday, I was still dehydrated. And I had been drinking water. Um, I had been trying to eat more. And I was still crazy dehydrated when I went in there. So this is something that a lot of people don't talk about, but it's it, it really is bad, you guys. And if, I don't know if women can actually function through it. Um, the ones that I have seen, my big sister functioned pretty good, but she was able to keep something done at some point during the day. But even she, like I said, lost 60 pounds through her pregnancy. The severe dehydration can cause your veins to collapse and they can't even put the IV in there. There's a whole lot of stuff that can go wrong, especially if your body doesn't take well to the medication. Luckily, mine, mine doing all right. We're doing okay. So that's what's been going on with me. At this point, I'm feeling better, but it's literally been four and a half, almost four and a half months straight of me just being sick. <laughs> and I, this pregnancy is night and day from the last one. I could function in the last one. It's been really hard to function so far. My doctor's really just hoping that this was a hump and that I got over the hump and that now everything is okay and that I won't need medication again and I won't need um, to be hospitalized or anything like that. Yeah, it only means that it's just starting now. It is nothing bad is going to happen. And everything is gonna just be smooth sailing because I said so. You see how optimistic he is? I love that, but I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm optimistic, but also realistic at the same time because I know what I've been feeling over this last four months. It's it's literally been every day, guys. Nope, nobody cares about reality. Every day, nobody cares about reality. <sighs> every day like this for four and a half months. 
and if you can imagine him having to take on all of my roles as well as his because he still works he takes on takes care of munchkin because there was some days i couldn't sit up i couldn't keep my eyes open i couldn't um and i couldn't wear my glasses like i said because the migraines get so bad i can't focus my eyes with my glasses on so in addition to that he's been cleaning <laughs> <laughs> he's been cooking, he's been taking Munchkin out to play because I've also had to just lay down a good chunk of the day. I can't even be out here with them. I'm just in bed because I can't move. And so it's 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 been a struggle. He's been a really good, a real good Merce. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he's been real good at helping take care of me and making sure I'm at least trying to... Um, Put something on my stomach, especially. But it's been nice watching him clean the kitchen on my behalf. Not having to clean the kitchen. <laughs> so yeah, that's what's been happening. Um, I'm feeling much better now. I will go into more detail on some of the other stuff in another video. Um, but I just want to update you guys on what's happening. So we are expecting uh, a little person. Yay! So. We're excited now. Everything seems to be moving a little bit smoother at this point. And now it's just being excited about bringing another little person into the world and enjoying being pregnant, hopefully. Uh, you see all those little cute pictures of everybody they having such a good time, they're able to move and do stuff, and cook and clean and work out. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna have one of those pregnancies. No, not even close. Body been shut down completely. So hopefully from this point forward, I can do those things. Anything you want to say here, Daddy-O? Just appreciate y'all listening. I ain't even close the video out yet. He just, he just, <laughs> he just ready to get up. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope to speak to some of you in the comment section down below. There was a couple of you who guessed that this is what was going on from my grocery hauls, having all this kind of interesting stuff mixed in to them, as well as me being out of breath, because I'm not normally out of breath. Y'all be catching everything. I don't even know how some of y'all be catching. Y'all be catching everything. I be thinking I'm slick with some stuff, and y'all be like, mm-mm, we know what you got going on, young and I'm like, man. But anywho, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you are new here, I would love it if you join the Jazzy 61 family by subscribing before you go. And thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you so much, my returners and new subscribers. You guys have been checking on me. You guys have been sticking by me. You guys have been extremely supportive and I really, really appreciate it. So uh, see y'all in my next one. And hopefully I'm getting back to my two video a week format. Don't look at my husband because he'll probably say no. No. Um, hopefully I'll get back to my two video a week format soon. No. Thank you all again so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye guys.